Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. In today's video we're going to do things a little differently. Usually at this point I say, okay, well I'm going to get some foam and start building a base, but for this project it involved a good old walk in the forest and finding this crazy piece of wood, cutting out this little rotten piece, and then thinking, okay, well, what can I build into this? I also went to the pet shop and uh, buying food for my cat actually, but I also found this crazy little piece of tree for reptiles, I believe. And I thought maybe I could combine the two. So with a bit of jiggling, I sort of held it in place, glued it in, and began to fill out the base a little bit with some other twisted nice pieces of wood. Kind of holding them up and finding places where they might fit. With a bit of cutting and adjustments, things fit quite nicely and I was able to glue them in place. Again, just had to make little cuts here and there, sometimes with a saw, sometimes with a Dremel. And just using a hot glue gun to enable me to work quite quickly. And once I've started to flesh out the base a little bit, I started to take some little pieces of bark and just loosely place these on with some blue tack. This allowed me to be free and not commit until I was happy and then when I was, I was able to glue these on. Next I made some rocks using some Woodland Scenics rock moulds. Just mixed up some fine casting plaster and then poured these into the mould. I was a bit sceptical about using this sort of thing to begin with, but I took the plunge, invested in some, and but I have to say the result is great. You know, look at the detail. Then I began gluing these to my piece of wood. Again, just similar to the bark, just holding them up in place and trying to find ways that they would work together, sometimes having to break them into smaller pieces and not worrying too much about big gaps at the moment because I know I can always fill this in later. Next, I made myself a template of, the, of a rough shape that I wanted to use. And with a bit of cutting and test fitting, I was able to find the contours that allowed me to sort of insert this. And I used a little old vitamin packet as a kind of support structure. I traced out some brickwork and then with the Dremel, A fine tool just carve these out taking my time taking care not to go too deep at any one time and this was quite a relaxing process I have to say what it did do is leave these slightly raised edges and it was a bit untidy so just with a bit of sandpaper I just ran over these to smooth everything down nicely and I've got some hairspray, extra hold for those who care, and uh, just some dust. Just gave it a little spray of spray and coated it with some dust, get a bit of texture on there, and then sprayed this grey with some primer. Next I took a large circular object and traced this shape onto my platform. I cut a piece of foam out for this and then also cut my support structure to shape and size. And then also cut my support structure to size. I drew out a smaller circle and then began to draw out some brickworks 
And I thought, hmm, maybe I could add a little extra platform to this side. So, again, following the same process as before, trying to be as level as possible, I glued this on. I did have to support this while it was gluing, just to keep everything level, but once it was glued fast, it, it could easily support its own weight. I tidied up some of the gaps and edges here, just with some, some off cuts, and I thought this part could be a well or some sort of water collection structure of sorts. So I drilled out a big hole with it and then sealed the bottom. I began to build in some brickwork, just cutting little pieces of foam to size. Again, it doesn't matter if they're all the same size or one slightly bigger than the other. I'm going for quite a sort of rustic feel here. And it will be, you know, there'll be all manner of vegetation and things to, to help me tidy things up again. Now this was a really fun idea. I printed out a sort of design that I was quite happy with from the internet and then traced this onto some foam. And then in the negative spaces, just depressed them and it left me with this sort of embossed texture that I found really nice. I built up some of the surrounding brickwork as if there'd been a slight collapse in some of the structure. And then next I'll set about making some arches. So I used another circular shape and just drew around it. So I was consistent all the way through. Next I cut these out and cut one of them into smaller pieces, marking each one um, on the correct side so they could all go together again in the same way and I drilled a, a central hole through all of these. These would allow me to feed wires internally. Next, I took a little sort of plastic piece out of a squeezy bottle and I thought this could make a nice housing for my light. I drilled a hole, glued on my raised circular platform, and then added my other little circular platform for the extra bit of detail. Taking care to try and line everything up so it was all central. Next, I fed the wire through and glued all my pillar support structures into place. Again, using my marking system to make sure that everything fitted together again. Then I had a, a sort of central column that would be used to attach all the pillars. And because it was free running, I was able to adjust the height as, as needed. Now I fed these wires through, built up the rest of the structure and glued it into place, making sure everything was straight, and then soldered all the components together. I used a simple rocker switch, some simple wire, little three volt battery pack, and uh, just built little foam houses for these so I could hide everything underneath the main structure very easily. Then I took some sculptor mold. This is a fantastic modeling material if you're not familiar with it, but great for building up textures, filling gaps, and the way it dries, if you don't smooth it out yourself, but with your fingers, then it gives you a quite a nice rocky texture just without doing much at all. Texture for free, what's better than that? Then I gave everything a good spray down with some PVA just to seal everything. And then with some neat PVA, I just came in and started to add some little rocks and boulders. A few twigs and whatnot in there as well for good measure, but I wasn't being too selective at this point. Now I added some fine dirt onto this, again, just collected from, from outside. It's 
just blends everything together quite nicely. Again, we carefully spray all this down just to set everything in place. And then I mixed up some sort of really diluted washes of greys and browns and sort of ochre colours and began to paint in the rocks with these, just letting the water flow, do its own thing, varying the colour from section to section. Again, also varying the intensity of colour, the opaqueness, how much water is added to the paint. So you get some areas which are more rich in colour and some which are more diluted. And next I just added some homemade black wash that I'd mixed up, just using some ink and some acrylic medium and a little dish soap. And just use the brush to sort of blend this in quite nicely. Next, I've got some Halford's Trusty Primer, some grey, and then just a can of black just to touch in some of the shadows. I came in and started to prime this using a shield where necessary. And this was mainly just to give a good paintable area to the to the foam that I'd created. Next, sometimes you go one step forward, two steps back, but for a greater good. So I found this cool little thing at a, another pet shop, cut it into pieces and thought, ah, oh, this would make a great little addition um, to sort of tie the two components together. But it meant that I had to sort of go backwards a few steps, as I said, and get back to the sculptor mold, blend all the edges. But it just goes to show this way of working is, is quite free and easy and there is no real set method to doing any of it. As long as you understand that you can always blend the separate parts together, you can kind of go backwards and forwards as many times as you need. And I sort of scratched up the pillars a little bit to add a bit of damage. And then just started to blend all these together again with some paint. And you can see how effective that was. Then next using some scenery glue, um, I started to just add in little dots, irregular patterns, trying to not repeat too many shapes. Letting the liquid do its thing. And just adding little sprinkles of flock here and there, taking care not to go too heavy at first, but sort of once I started to get the feel for it, you, you kind of get a good understanding of of the balance that you that I was looking for. And then during some gardening, I uprooted a few plants and managed to keep the root balls. These keep me fully stocked up for for <laughs> many many weeks, I imagine and I attached some of these vines just with some super glue and some activator. Just taking my time, creating little hinges and junction points and continuing. And then I had these little bushes that I made up. I'm just using a scalpel, put a little hole, dot of super glue. And I'll put a few of these in and around. And I 
had some plastic plants as well from sort of fake flowers that you can get, topiary balls, that kind of thing. And I'd sprayed these up in sort of different shades of green and just used these, cut into smaller pieces sometimes, dotting them here and there. And I just gave everything a light dry brush just to pronounce some of the details a little more. And then used some of this stabilized reindeer moss to begin to flesh out the foliage. Adding little bits of clump foliage from Woodland Scenics also. And I found just by using a, a variety of greens and textures, you're able to build up quite a natural looking environment. And then next, probably my favorite material, this is just called foliage, but it's on a kind of polyfiber base. And you can pull and stretch and move this around. And it, I, I love working with this stuff. And then some good old trusty grass tufts. Again, you can alter the color of these slightly if you need to. And this model uses many of the materials and techniques that I used in a previous video where I built a crazy floating ancient ruins type thing. I'll leave a link to that if you want to watch that. But this, this is really sort of a progression on from that, I guess, expanding on some of the ideas that I had, um, exploring new territory. And so I mixed up some resin um, just in equal parts and added some uh, ink just to tint it. And then carefully started pouring this down and letting nature take its course, showing me where the, the waterfalls would naturally fall to. And this blue might seem pretty intense at this point, but used pretty thinly, so you can barely see it actually. And then next I made up some waterfalls using some clear quick grab adhesive. Um, I got this tip from Luke at Geeks Gaming. I'll uh, add a link in the description below. But basically you just run out some beads of, of this sort of mastic material, it's clear. And then with some toothpicks run up and down and then pull out some little bits just to create a little bit of texture let this dry and I was free to then tear this up into small little pieces and slowly just dot my way around, begin to secure these on as where I wanted to. I mean, at this point, I really had no plan for where the water was going. I was sort of just making up, going with what felt right. And slowly but surely, things started to really come together. This was quite a forgiving material to work with. There's, if I were to do it again, there's a couple of things I would maybe change in the future. And just to blend everything together, I just gummed out a little bit more of, the, of this mastic material and just used a, a small spatula just to tease over some of the edges. And I mean, you could do this with resin maybe, but this is somehow much thicker than resin and holds its shape and body a little bit more and yet dries almost as crystal clear as resin. So I found this quite a uh, good material to work with. It dries really quickly, probably a couple of hours and it's, it's pretty much dry, repaintable and cheap. went round, just joining up any little bits, imagining where the water might flow. 
And I've never done anything like this before, I have to say. I mean, working with waterfalls like this on this scale is a real step up for me. But, you know, if you don't try, you'll never know, I guess. And I just disguised some of the wiring and some of the plastic structure, just with some more vines. Let these hang down. And then finally, just coming in with some white, just really delicately just touching in some of the, the high points on the water. Now this has been quite the ambitious project for me. I've never tried anything quite like this, but I've really enjoyed it. If you've also enjoyed it, then you might consider subscribing and checking out what other videos I have on my channel. Equally, you can show YouTube that you really appreciate this kind of video by hitting the like button. Also, possibly share it with a friend who you think might find it interesting. Now this journey started with a walk in the woods, uh, not much of an idea, but a willingness to leap into the unknown and see what came of it. Now, the end result I'm pretty happy with. What I'll use it for, I've no idea, you know. Um, maybe you could use it on the tabletop as part of some game on, in the corner as a kind of crazy piece of terrain but equally I just love the journey and for now it will sit on my mantelpiece looking cool thank you for watching and enjoy